your thoughts? Incredible, TJ. I want to take a look at some of the final quarter moments because you're right, Brownie. It just looked like Sydney had it all in their control. Tom Papley kicks this, and you think it's all over. Uh, there's some talk about a push in the back. I didn't see it that way. I thought Mortis had to oh. be stronger in the contest. But <laughs> Papley was enormous. He kicked three, but then here they come. Oh, Hoskin Elliott, he looked dangerous and lively up forward. And there's four minutes to go there, and you're thinking, no way, they're going to do it again. There's the smother there from Mychek, which was the smother of the season. The veteran side bottom slots that one through, and then it's all the momentum. You think it's just going to happen. Um, but Sydney, in these moments, were good enough to rush the footy through a couple of times, did the right things at the right moment. And when that went through, it was game over. And you can see the scenes, heartbreak for Collingwood after winning so many close games this year and just absolute ecstasy for Sydney. What a story they've been. They're a thrilling team to watch. They're in really good shape. It's going to be a cracking ground final. Thanks, Kane. I think Collingwood can uh, go to beds last night. They would have and said, we couldn't have given any more. Like, we gave absolutely everything. We didn't start the game well, but we've, we've won so many fans this year. But the Brisbane Lions, they were bitterly disappointing. And I just want to show some vision that highlights... You know what you're going to get with Geelong, and that's going to be an extra number back behind the ball. So there's Tom Stewart. He's ready to go. But Lincoln McCarthy, within five minutes of the game, he's just blasted the ball. Lincoln gets it again. There's players on short. You've got to hit them up against Geelong, yet he's just blasted to the extra number back behind the ball for Geelong. Kept going on and on. Eric Hipwood, he should know that because he's the forward that was dealing with it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the same thing. Kick back long to Henry, uh, these types of players. Tom Stewart, Collar Jasney, yeah, I'll lay off as well from long bombs. Sydney won't play that way. It's going to be an intriguing grand final. This is what Sydney do. They lower the eyes better than any other team in the comp going forward. So Buddy knows there'll be a Darcy Moore or a Jeremy Howe buck behind the footy. We'll hit up. So the next one, you watch this one. Uh, Warner, lower the eyes. Players looking to roll back, uh, cover the space, lower the eyes. And this last one, or oh, second last one, McInerney. Fantastic. So this is where it's going to be an intriguing grand final. The two best coaches in the game going at it. And this one, Robbie Fox just drifts forward. Look, Dacos, he thinks it's going to go long. They just drop it into Robbie Fox when he thinks it's not going to go there. So that's where I think Longmire is a great tactician. So is Chris Scott, and it'll be a great grand final, Brownie. Great vision, Lordo. Uh, I work with Ross Lyon every Sunday and then I watch him on Monday nights. He talks about assertive defence quite a lot and Darcy Moore is an assertive defender, but it's a fine line. Earlier on in the year, he was a little bit off. He closed it up, but Sydney, assertive defence yesterday. Think about it, it's a one-point win and they get two goals from assertive defence. Have a look at McCartan's work here. So this is a kick out early. So have a look at the space out the back if this gets over the back. So that's called assertive defence. He gets the fist forward and they kick the first goal of the game. If he misses that fist, Gets over the back. That's what Collingwood want. And then this is the start of the third quarter. Look at the space out the back. But McCartan up, attacking, assertive defence, takes the mark, goes back off the mark, kicks it in, and they take the mark through Logan McDonald. Two acts in a really tight the game of assertive defence, and McCartan got it right both times. I want to head back to Kane now, uh, who, as I said, watched the game pretty intensely as long, uh, along with everyone else. Were you surprised by some of the matchups? I was a little bit, TJ, particularly the Collingwood defenders. It felt like every time Sydney went inside 50, they were scoring, particularly early. So Maynard on Franklin. You've got Howe and you've got Moore back there. They opted to go with Maynard on Franklin. I just thought that was a strange matchup. I also thought that Noble on Heaney was a bit of a strange matchup as well. So the big key defenders that I admire most in the game are those the ones that, yeah, they can intercept and they can do all that, like Howe and Moore can do, but they also actually play on someone. You've got Buddy Franklin up there, a man who's kicked over a 1,000 goals, and Moore and Howe uh, leaving the rest to, to Braden Maynard, who's 10 centimetres shorter than Buddy Franklin. So 36 points up. The Swans fell in by one point. You'll see here John Longmire shell-shocked still after the game. And Craig McRae continued his winner's mantra at all costs. Um, no, I'm OK. I mean, it's just... Um, <laughs> <laughs> just you know, prelim final by a point, so... Um, uh, I did write up on the whiteboard. Um, you don't get caught up. We're winners only. Winners only for us is a catch cry we've used right from day one. Um, sometimes when you lose, you can still act like winners. Yeah, I tell you what, it's, uh, he's been consistent, hasn't he, with the message right throughout the season. And look, as a Collingwood supporter, I'm going to shout it from the rooftops, but uh, I couldn't be prouder of mm. the performance that they've put in this year, where they've come from, where they're supposed to have finished, and uh, bring on 2023. And I think that's the feeling and of the most. The other thing he always says this year is we play the full 120 minutes. So yeah. 
And then that gets in the players' minds and they know that we're going to come back. Yeah. It also gets in the opposition's minds, which I thought it did yesterday. Early stages last quarter, Sydney knew Collingwood were going to come. Mm. They played safe, they chipped the ball around the edges and that's how Collingwood got back into it. You, you showed the uh, media conference there with uh, John Longmire. There was fascinating footage uh, afterwards. Um, uh, I think it was on Seven Mate or something at this stage, of John Longmire talking to the players in the rooms. And it wasn't like hey, we're in the grand final or anything like that. It was a real post-mortem mm -hmm. and obviously talking about the fact that they sort of almost let it slip. Yeah, well, it may well be that they've set themselves for this flag. They were um, bitterly disappointed last year. Now, they went out in an elimination final in 2021 against GWS. They felt they had the power to get to a grand final last year. Obviously, that didn't happen. It's unfinished business, clearly, TJ. Mm -hmm. And now they've got some business, Lord, to attend to in a, in a meaningful um, personnel availability sense with what happened to Sam Roy. Yeah, they missed a lot of shots in that final, didn't they, last year? Uh, just dealing with Sam Reid. They were flying with Sam Reid and, and obviously Tom Hickey in the ruck. The moment he went down, they still had a lead, but it got, got at them because Isaac Heaney was having to take forward stoppage uh, ruck work, which you don't want to do, and suddenly... So, so you're tracing this 35-point yeah, difference yeah. back to this man I, going off? I think it's structurally. They got a bit safe. There's no doubt they went a bit safe and they tried to hold on to the lead, but he is just a huge loss, and you start asking yourself who comes in for him. There's no like-for-like. They're going, to, they're going to drop in standard. And I think Joel Amadi is ahead of McLean. So McLean last played in round eight. Amadi did this round, 20, uh, round 18 and 19, I think it was. So he clunked some huge grabs against the Western Bulldogs. Here he is, kicked a few goals and uh, did OK the week after as well. So no Sam. I think Reed's going as well as he has in a long time with his importance. But I think this might be the next next man up. So you've got Amadi over Hayden McLean in yeah. terms of the big man possibilities. Is Harry, Harry Cunningham a possibility or... or a shorter, smaller player? I think they have to go another tall to, to combat uh, Blixarves and Reece Stanley. And that's the other thing we saw post-game were those players and a couple of others out on the ground yeah. just starting their preparations yeah. already for a likely call-up. And just on McRae and the influence, there wasn't one player I saw a photo who lay on their back. Yeah. After, yeah. That great yeah. Final, yeah. after that final, so it's yeah. amazing the impact he's had. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, there's so many good stories yeah. to come out of the Sydney Swans. And I love the Tom Hickey story, like, you know, the classic journeyman. But I, I love the McCartan story. I love the fact that Paddy McCartan has been to hell and back with his yeah. concussions. Uh, there was a time he played on his brother when he was a forward. And uh, now they're both sharing this back line and potentially premiership players. Well, you were using what improbable, his story. It was almost impossible, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and even the emotion of, of getting through to the grand final last night when he was interviewed post-match on, on Fox footy, you, you can just see what it meant and, and what it's going to do to him this week. I can't, yeah, I can't, I honestly, I actually can't believe it, mate, to be honest. I, from, yeah, where I was um, to, to where I am now, it's, um, it's bloody crazy, mate. I can't, can't believe it, so... Um, yeah, 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 it's nuts. <laughs> he just it was, held it together. Because it? it was during this year, wasn't it, when we thought he had another concussion? Remember those, uh, those really good season scenes? Yeah. 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 yeah, when he was in yeah. the rooms, you know, just distraught up against yeah. the wall. We, we spoke about Collingwood and uh, just the guts and the near glory that they've experienced this year. Kane, what do they need to do to, to, to take that extra step in 2023? Well, I think they need a key forward, and Dan McStay's not going to help them. We saw him on Friday night, and he, he, he was missing in Brisbane's forward line. So who's going to be their forward mix, and have they overachieved this year? It's been absolutely incredible about what they have done, but I don't think you just expect them to go the next step next year. I think they need to really have a strong pre-season. No doubt teams are going to study them hard with their game plan. It's going to be a lot more difficult for Collingwood next year. Part of that is having a key forward. If they do lose Brody Grundy, I'm not sold on their ruck setup as well with Mason Cox and Cameron there as well. So, yeah, I still think there's some questions they need to answer personnel-wise if they do want to take the next step as much as we've all loved what they've done this year. Kane, there's obviously substance to what they've been about the entirety of the year. Is it, is it something that can just naturally flow on and for this team to get back to the top four at the, at the very least next year? Yeah, there's the po possibility of that, Damo, but there's also the possibility that they lose those close games or things don't go their way again this year. We're seeing you know, what they did this year. We know that, 7-0, and zero, with those games decided by under a goal and then the two close finals losses. But that's not a given that they just win those games next year. So I think you, know, you have a moment as a team to really celebrate and appreciate what you've done and you do that for a few weeks or so, but then you've really got to get down to work and... Uh, the best teams do it year after year. And we haven't seen Collingwood do it year after year yet, but it's not just a given that they play off in a grand final next year. Watching that game yesterday, I reckon Collingwood people would sit there and go, do we need 
to move on Brodie Grundy because I felt like they lacked aggression in the ruck, particularly in the first half. Darcy Cameron fought back in the second half, but there was a few times where Darcy Cameron needed to compete to get the ball out of bounds, and he didn't do it. There was a couple of times Hickey grabbed the ball out of the ruck, and I just felt like if they had the aggression of Grundy yesterday in the ruck, would they have been 36 points down? I don't think so. So I think they need to second-guess on that. And, I mean, I would have loved to have seen Brodie Grundy and what he brought to the table in that final year. You're letting go to Goey then, because unfortunately... Mm. Yeah, it's a just, tough one. They just have to. What, so have to let go of let the Let go of, no, a player. Oh, of, of, to keep Grundy. To keep Grundy. Yeah. So that, that's the issue. Well, I, I would rather keep to Goey. Yes. And I think that's the way they'll go, don't you? Yeah. That's yeah. the way they're yeah. thinking, and that's why they want it yeah. to now go, yeah.